all of a sudden I became a, I was a suicide loss survivor. Like all of a sudden I was that person. I remember my father telling a story about his cousin's husband. You know, it was like, there was always a story about somebody taking their life. Never thought in a million years, anybody I knew, anybody I knew that I even had not power over, but I had influence over that I, I would never allow that to happen. Mm -hmm. How could that even happen? I thought it was doing all the right things. It doesn't work like that. And it just doesn't work that way. No, it doesn't. It just doesn't work that way. And he, he just, it just was all too much. Mm -hmm. It was all too much. And, you know, he reminded me a lot of Anthony Bourdain. Mm -hmm. And after mm -hmm. John died, I remember looking at Anthony Bourdain going, He's not happy. There's something in his eye. Mm -hmm. And I remember, th never thought that before until after John died. And then so that when he took his life, I wasn't really surprised mm -hmm. because John was so similar to him. He just, he, he, it was in, he was insatiable. Mm -hmm. You know, he rode motorcycles. He played the guitar. He played the saxophone. He had so many interests. He, he never, he was always busy. And I realized he was, because he was never, he was never, at peace. Right. Never comfortable. Yeah. But you don't know that until you like you see it and then you realize it. Mm -hmm. So now this happened all before the stuff happened with the kids. So but I thought, well, kids... at least my kids were OK. And my kids knew him. But towards the end in that last year, the, the whole coffee shop thing, I kind of kept them separate from him just because he was just everything was just so chaotic. And so I. So they were devastated. There was, he had children who were in their 20s. And he had an ex-wife, who was the first person I called, who came. Because I was so worried about his kids. Yeah. And so it, it was just one of those things. We had 450 people at the memorial service mm. five days later. Wow. And everyone was shell-shocked. Nobody yeah. could believe it. And... I went into this grief journey thing and I, I never, ever had, I never grieved. So I slept for like two weeks and then I was like, well, okay, now I got to get back to, I got to get back to my life. And it was just, why am I not being able to get back to my life? Mm -hmm. Like, why is this so hard? And everybody was amazing and everybody came out and it was amazing. The things that people thought to do for me mm -hmm. was amazing. Mm -hmm. Just just the things that they just thought like were, were thoughtful. Oh my gosh. Like, you know, from, from simple, like, Hey, you want to go for a walk? You don't even have to talk. We're going to go for a walk. I'm going to come by, pick you up and take you for a walk from that to, um, to just taking me places or taking me out or listening or just, um, people drop off food, just drop off food. Yeah, the food. Well, the food was oh, yeah, it was overwhelming. My mom was living with me at the time and my mother couldn't handle the food. I had to stop it because it was just overwhelming my mother. <laughs> well, everything overwhelms my mother. But anyway, but um, anyway, it was just I don't know. It was just like just all of the things that people thought of. But what happens is, is that you get that whole big wave at the time and then it all starts dropping off and you're you're in or just taking me to the movies or just it would just be like these people would say, hey, um, I'm going to come by and get you or I'm going to do this. And it was just amazing. And I have like several mommy groups, you know, because I have the mommy group from Jeff's class. And then Matt's kind of in that group. And then I have a you know a few people from Luke and then I have a people from Ian. So Marian's one of them, you know, from yes. Ian's group. So it was just amazing, like all the people and how thoughtful they were. And I just. So I did all, so I, I, I called Dee Dee Hirsch and I, I lined up therapy. I lined up a grief group because I knew I had to do all those things. Dee Dee Hirsch is an amazing resource. And so I went through all the things and I thought I was okay. And the year passed. And then the second year was like, oh, it's really hard. The second year was hard. Okay. Third year will be better. Oh, third year was actually harder in different ways. But mm. third year is when you start going, you're like trying to find meaning. Now you're starting to like find meaning in life mm -hmm. and you go into like a whole. So I went down all these rabbit holes of trying to understand my faith, Christianity, my understanding how the world works, how 
how suffering is so much part of life mm -hmm. and how you have to embrace that and all those things. Maybe happiness isn't a good goal. Maybe finding meaning is a good goal. Mm -hmm.